Hey, this is Brian Oliva at Gethsemane Music. Today we're going to look at text entry and how to save presets on the Moog One. If you make any changes to a preset, whether it be a new init or an existing preset, as soon as you change anything, the save light on the Moog One lights up. If you'd like to save what you've changed, press the save button. That will make the preset screen switch to an edit screen which allows you to edit or change the preset name, the timbres, or the categories, moods, or groups. To change between presets and timbres, just turn the encoder knob until the one you want to change is highlighted. Text can be entered by using the white keys on the Moog One's keyboard, as shown as the diagram on the bottom of the screen. The white keys contain all the alphabetical characters, but the black keys do special functions. The first black key, or the lowest C-sharp on the keyboard, changes it to the standard English alphabet, which is the default anyway. But you'll need that button to change it back if you touch any of the other six black notes. The one switches it into numeric mode, where you have a full set of numbers and also subscripts and superscripts. The next black key changes it to a wide selection of symbols. fourth black key adds even more symbols, fractions, copyright symbols, registered trademarks, publishing symbols, some numeric stuff. The next one gets you into a selection of foreign alphabet characters that have the different accent marks used by different languages across the world. The next black key adds to that some additional ones for even more languages. And the sixth black key, which is an E-flat, changes it to the Cyrillic alphabet, so you can even use Russian characters if you so choose. We return by hitting the first black key to get it back to the English alphabet. While the first seven black keys control character sets, the last eight black keys at the other end of the keyboard are more for editing functions. The first character, the upside down question mark, is an auto preset name generator, which can have some quite humorous results. Every time you press that, the preset name will change to something that it randomly generates. It always uses the English character set regardless of any language selections you make. The next black key is a delete key. If you press that, it totally blanks out the field that you're using and allows you to start over from scratch. The key next to that is a backspace that allows you to just back up from the whatever point your cursor is at to delete the characters going backwards. The next two keys allow you to either go down or up the alphabet, just changing the last character you did by one click, either up or down, which allows you to make minor corrections if you just missed by one. Further up, our keys will let you go back to move the cursor without deleting or changing anything that lets you get into position so you can either add a character or delete something. And the final key is a spacebar. It allows you to add spaces or put spaces between characters as you're typing. Once you get your text squared away, if you need to change the type, category, mood, or group, those can be changed just by turning the knobs directly below them. If you'd like to add or change notes, just press the button over the Note tab and that new window will open where you can either add or change what's already there. When you're done, press one of the two Save buttons. You can either overwrite the current preset or save it as a new preset. Choose carefully. When you're done, everything will be saved. The other way to enter text, which is more convenient if you're doing a lot of typing, is to use a PC keyboard. 
If it's a corded keyboard, just plug it into the USB host port on the back of the Moog 1. Any PC-based keyboard should work. It's unconfirmed, but it's my understanding that Apple keyboards, for some reason, don't quite do it. I've even been able to use a Logitech USB cordless keyboard successfully, just plugging the little USB fob into the back of the Moog 1, and then the keyboard worked fine after that. This is a lot easier when you're typing longer notes, and if you're doing a lot of updates all at one time, maybe the PC keyboard is the way to go. And when your work's done, be sure to save it. And you can move on to your next project. Well, that's it for today. Hopefully you found this video informative and useful. If you have, please remember to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, keep on playing.